Okay, hello everybody. This is another Q&A speed paint and I'm here to answer some questions and, you know, show you guys some of my speed paints. Um, <laughs> okay, so I put out kind of a request on Twitter and Instagram and Tumblr for you guys to submit some questions. So I'm going to try to answer at least as many as I can. Um, you guys sent a lot, so I'm just kind of picking and choosing. I kind of condensed some because they were a lot of the same questions, but I kind of like made it simpler for myself just to simplify it or whatever. Uh, anyway, so did you go to art school? Uh, yes. Yes, I did. I went to two uh, art colleges. The first one was just a standardized, you know, art college. We did digital art and traditional painting and everything like that. Uh, that course was about 10 months, uh, which was nice. I'm, I'm very fidgety in school, so I can only be in there for so long <laughs> until I want to jump out of the windows. So yeah, that one was about 10 months. And then the second one I went to was an animation school, which was 12 months. So yeah, that was that's pretty much what I did. Uh, I greatly benefited from it. I, You could just see from day one uh, to the last day, like within the 10 months or 12 months or whatever, how much I grew. It, it's always like kind of crazy when you look and it's like, oh my god, you know, it, it really benefited me and it was the right environment I needed. Um, okay, so any tips for beginning artists? So yeah, usually I get this question a lot. Um, I think the best thing you can do is study life drawing. So uh, I'll put I'll put a link in the description, which is like this website. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but uh, pretty much what it is, it's a life drawing uh, website that you can kind of like uh, set a timer and then you just draw. And they they have pictures. It is nude models. You can have unnude models too, like with underwear on or something if you're sensitive to that. Um, but yeah, uh, that's a really good website. When I was in art college, we did a lot of life drawing, so it's really beneficial and I, I greatly recommend it. Um, you know, for beginner artists, I also recommend going to your local art galleries and seeing if there's any like little courses you can take and uh, see if you can get anything out of that. I mean, when I was, I lived in a town that had like you know, it was a pretty small town. It, it, it was like a like 10,000 people or something like that. It wasn't it wasn't small, small, but it wasn't big, big. So I didn't have a lot of options when it came to that stuff. But if I did, whenever like the art gallery had anything, it was just like I latched onto it. And, you know, even if I wasn't super into like, I don't know, mosaics or like painting specific like landscapes, uh, but anything would help, you know, anything learning about color, learning about um, structure, anything like that, you know, like grab onto it and just kind of like, like <laughs> just learn anything you can get out of it. And that's that's really what I what I recommend for for new artists. And uh, uh, I mean, be open to a critique. Critique's a huge, huge part of being an artist is you have to just like you know, figure out what's wrong and then try to fix it. Because usually, uh, I mean, it depends on the people, but when people critique you, you know, they're trying to better you in a way, you know, they're trying to help. Um, and, you know, not to take it personally, you know. Uh, critique can always be pretty hard for some artists right off the bat too, because, you know, it's a pretty sensitive um, time when you're just starting. Um, but, you know, uh, find people who can critique you with love and uh, people who will give you, you know, some really good tips. So, yeah. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, what is it? Uh, how do I start D&D? &D? Uh, and I d if I don't know anything about it, and what if I have nobody to play with? Okay, so I get this question a lot too. Like, how do you start playing when you have no idea how it works? Uh, I mean, since I started with 3.5, you know, that, that system was pretty complicated, but um, 5e is a lot more uh, kind of like absorbable, I guess. Uh, so I, what I would suggest is to get the player's handbook for 5e and just read through it. Like, just, just kind of go through it. It's okay if you don't understand it completely. You just, just like, as long as you kind of like absorb it a little bit, it's okay. And even then, it's, it's okay. I, what I would do is I would also... Uh, go on to the D&D subreddits uh, for sure and just um, 
you know, poke around a bit, maybe ask questions if you're you're wondering about things. Uh, look at podcasts, or I mean, listen to podcasts. Uh, I guess Critical Role. I haven't watched or listened to Critical Role, but um, I definitely suggest like just just seeing people play really helps. And at the end of the day, you kind of just need to go for it because. Uh, I started D&D with a group of people who've never played it before and we all just kind of like we had the books we had one set of dice so we had to pass around the d20 when we were playing and uh, we had no idea how it worked the only person that our DM uh, like he knew a little bit because his sister had played a lot but he had never played so we were all kind of like, uh, I don't know, and we kind of just went for it. And to be honest, I didn't get a grasp on D&D for like two years, like two to three years it took me to get D&D at least like the basics down. And then, you know, I've been playing it for like, I think like seven years now maybe going on to eight um and now i feel completely comfortable with it like it's like it's no problem but you know it takes a while and i'm very much not a math person i'm very much not into like systems and trying to figure out like oh you gotta add that and then you can do that and you times that and uh, uh, uh. it's like i didn't know how to do any of that so and i'm not very good at that stuff so D D was definitely like for a while, I actually didn't like D and I liked hanging out with my friends, and I liked making funny, silly jokes and and doing it. But I didn't like the system. It was so like <sighs> aggravating for me because I just didn't understand it right off the bat. And it, that's okay. Like that's okay. As long as you're having fun with your friends and you're just trying to like like get it, you will eventually get it. You just have to keep keep at it. You know, you gotta keep playing. Um, for anybody who doesn't have anybody to play with, there are online you know, uh, services for that. Like, there's Roll20. Um, and I don't know if there's any other... I mean, there might be. I don't know. I don't play online at all. Like, I'm, I, the only time I, I played online was when I did that one shot with Puffin Forest and Zboshu. So I've, I've never, I never played online as much. But I definitely think, like, if you go into the D&D subreddit, you'll be able to find some players and, and find a system that will work for you and, and you know, maybe there's Discord servers that you can go to and, and stuff like that. So yeah, um, yeah, I hope that I hope that helps. Um, okay, next question: How do you come up with your D and D characters? Any pointers for new players? Um, well, I mean, when I make a D and D character, I kind of think of like, what's the most weird, random thing that you can make, and kind of just go for it. You know, like, uh, like Seps was just like a really weird kind of experiment of. I want to make a character that's a race that I've never really seen before. And then I was like, okay, monkeys are really weird. Um, at least in my books. Uh, and then, yeah, when it came to like classes, uh, you can definitely kind of look on the homebrews and see how how some people do some weird, weird stuff. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much whenever I make a character, I'm just trying to go for like the weirdest combination of things and the weirdest kind of like... What's their flaw and what's their their uh, fear and stuff like? I want them to be, I want them to be unique in their own, and then for them to to grow. Um, so yeah, any pointers for new players? Um, just yeah, don't be afraid to have a character that is complete garbage at the front, like at the beginning, because the thing is that I see a lot of like power gamers where they just they want to be the center, they want to be like super badass and just like destroy everything like I touch a monster and it explodes you know it's like you don't have to do that you can have you can get to that point you can definitely get to that point but like what I would do is is when you start have a character that's not really great you know like uh they have faults they have flaws they have things that they kind of mess up at all the time and um because when they, they grow along with their level, they get better at that thing. And then when they are that level 16 or whatever, you feel accomplished. You're just like, oh my god, they've come so far. I've come so far. You know, stuff like that. And that's what makes it really satisfying to be, uh, you know, to play those kind of characters. And this kind of leads into another question, which is... Um, uh, what do you take from playing uh, your characters? Uh, has it changed your personality at all? Like more confident, etc. Uh, I thought this question was interesting because I just kind of recently um, 
discovered this about myself is that whenever I make a character, whenever I do like a uh, creation of like a personality or anything like that, uh, I, I subconsciously take something out of myself and kind of put it into the character like a fault, like, like something that's wrong with me, something that I'm dealing with at the time. And then I put it into the character and then I kind of like take that tiny thing and then I kind of blow it up to like crazy proportions and then I work through it. Uh, Sips was the example of at the time when I created him, I felt like I was losing control. Like, like a lot of things in my life were just falling apart. Like everything was just, just everything was losing control. So you can see that he was a character where everything was like, everything was out of his, his control. Like he had lost control of everything. Like, you know, he can't. Uh, whenever he casts a spell, there's that percentage of wild magic, which is him losing control. And when I finished playing him, because the campaign is over, it ended in June, um, I got... I, I, I felt like I felt... I felt better about not having so much control in my life. Like, I worked through it, through a character, which is weird, I guess, but it helped. Um, and in a way, I feel better that I don't... That, like, I worked through that. I, I, I feel like I don't have to have such control all the time. And I kind of accept that if you lose control, there is ways to get out of it. Like, there, there's people that will help you. You know, you're not alone, kind of, in that idea. Um, it was a really cool thing to reflect on, really, really um, fun. Right now, I have a character. I have a character who uh, is very low confidence. Just like, just bottom of the barrel confidence, and I'm trying to work her confidence back up. And in a way, that's kind of how my year has been. It's just like, at the beginning of the year I was fine, and then by the end of the year I had like such low confidence, and now I'm kind of like working my way out of that. You know what I mean? Like, that's a, that's a New Year's resolution for me, <laughs> like to build up some confidence. And you guys have even like, like seen that happen, you know? Like, I, I think you can tell from my first video to my latest video that I've gotten a little more confident and I feel better about it um which I mean uh, like some people were wondering about after I posted that video of the success video and how I felt after and how I was doing and I, I feel a lot better for sure uh as soon as I posted it it was like 50% of the problem went away for some reason I just like as soon as I posted it, I was just like huh, like I felt way better I just just everything kind of came off my shoulders at that moment and I felt oh, way better. It was better to just like talk about it. As soon as I can talk about it, I feel better, you know, um, it's like therapy, right? Uh, yeah, so I'm just trying to work up on that. But anyway, I just thought it was really cool because, you know, you're making characters and it just kind of kind of happened. And, and that's kind of how I make characters is I kind of like take a tiny piece of myself and put it in the character and I blow it up. And then I kind of like work through that problem with that character. I don't know if that's that sounds very weird <laughs> I don't know. it just sounds strange but it doesn't matter it was kind of just the way I, that I work through things and I didn't notice it until I guess I played more characters and was like oh yeah that's why I made that character like that because at that particular time I was very much you know feeling uh, I don't know lonely or something or you know some kind of problem in my life and I subconsciously put it in my character and I kind of worked through it and at the other end I, I got a lot better uh, can you tell us a little bit about the party and how they met? Um, so, okay, this this question is uh, definitely like comes up a lot and I'm glad you guys are super into them and want to figure them out. I'm definitely going to talk about them. Uh, I'm going to talk about their backstories and everything. But the thing is, is that I think what I'm going to be doing, um, which leads into another question that somebody left, which is, uh, will there be a full Fool's Gold animated series? Or will my dreams all die? Uh, <laughs> uh, so I am planning to make this kind of like a episodic series on YouTube. And it's kind of scary for me because I haven't really seen it done before. Uh, uh, like people have been linking me to like, um, what is that thing called? Harmon Quest? Or whatever uh, so you know it's just like there is formats for it and like they have done it in a way but it's like I don't think I've ever seen like a youtuber do it this way <sighs> but I mean I haven't searched really hard I mean I've tried a little bit but you know, <laughs> you know what I mean it's like I haven't seen it pop up in a successful like 
like being done before. So I'm hoping to do this where like in the arc we're in right now, uh, I'm gonna keep going after this arc. And there's about six arcs after this, I think, or yeah, about, about six. Um, and the previous arcs uh, I will be bringing up as it becomes relevant. You know, like, like I'm going to be bringing up characters' backstories as it becomes relevant. I'm going to be bringing up, um, you know, things from our past as it becomes relevant. I will talk about when we first met, you know, etc. But it's all going to come up when it's relevant because I don't want to lose the momentum of the story. And, and really, like, this arc is when everything kind of hits the fan anyway. Like, the previous arcs believe there's not much craziness. I mean, there's definitely some things I will be talking about, like, how did we get the dragon? And, like, um, uh, you know, characters' backstories and stuff like that. Like, we, I will talk about that. Um, but I'm doing it as it becomes relevant, because I don't want to just overwhelm everybody with all the stuff. Because, you know, a full campaign, there's a lot of information. There's a lot of stuff. And a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff. So I'm, I'm trying to write it in a way that it's going to be, uh, you know, episodic, and it's going to keep going. Um, and then sometimes I will pull it back and be like, hey, we're about to go into this city. Why don't I tell you about this city that we previously were at? You know, and let's talk about it. Or, hey, something comes up when it comes to, like, Arena's backstory. Let's go into her backstory and talk about it. So I want to do it in a way that it's nice and flowy and that you guys enjoy it. And, I mean, this is all very much an experiment to me and I'm trying to get better as a storyteller and better as like an animator like that's the whole reason for this channel is like I wanted to get better at telling stories and animating and drawing and you know loosening up a bit um so you know we'll see how it goes I haven't um I have a lot of doubts about the whole process because I've never like I said I haven't seen it done successfully to the point of like I don't know. I just, I haven't seen it done as much. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm a little scared about it. Uh, I'm a little worried. Um, I don't know. I'm going to see how it goes. I'm going to see how I feel about it. I, I enjoy doing it. And I think that's the main thing I should try to focus on is that I enjoy doing it. Um, cause I just want to do something that I enjoy and I just hope people like it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Ugh, God. Um, yeah, you guys get it. So yeah, I, uh, man, I hope this, I hope this Q&A wasn't too long. Um, yeah, but you know, thanks for all the questions. I do still have like, you guys sent me a lot of questions, so I, I, I like saved a bunch of them and I still have a list. So next Q&A, I probably won't even do a shout out of like, send me questions because there's just so many. Um, and you guys sent some really good ones and I just, I just don't have, um, enough speed paint to give you guys I might be even over now. So, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I hope you guys all have a great 2019. I have to get used to that. Um, well, I hope you have a good day. Yeah. I hope you have a really good day. So, I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye.